Hi everybody. Today we're going to talk about how to write a materials list for science class. And this is specifically uh, helpful for a lot of different laboratory experiences, but especially for when you're writing a lab report in science class. So this is what we're going to talk about in the video. We'll talk about why, we'll talk about what to include, and we'll look at the format and some examples. All right, so the materials list helps others to easily replicate our experiment, and it's going to make it easier for them to also follow along with the procedure. It's similar to when you have been baking a recipe at home, and it's helpful to have all the stuff in front of you before you begin, because then you know you have what you need to complete the recipe. Same thing is true for within science. If you know what you need, it's gonna be much easier to follow that procedure. So what do we include? Always make sure you include the size. So instead of a beaker, say a 250 milliliter beaker, and include the amount of each material. How many grams of baking soda do you need? How many milliliters of vinegar do you need? How many beakers are you going to need? Often a list format, either with bullets or separated by commas, is a great way to write a procedure. Here is an example from one of my students. Um, what's not ideal about this is they did not say how much vinegar they need, and they didn't give you even like rough sizes of how much or how big these pieces of copper and cement or granite should be. That'd be nice if they said, you know, pieces, you know, less than two inches in size, something like that. Um, also, they could have been a little bit more specific with what they mean by dish. Okay. And of course, just gr grammatical things like that dish, the D should be capitalized. So here's some other examples. How does the mass of a ball affect how far it rolls after leaving a ramp? You're going to need three different balls. And we're being a little bit more specific about like what kind of balls we're going to be looking for. You would need a meter stick and you would need a ramp. Okay. Experiment two. How does the shape of a piece of clay affect its ability to float? You're going to need clay and you're going to need a large tank of water for this. Okay. You might need a, you know, depending on what you plan to do, you might need a balance to make sure you're using the same mass of clay in each experiment. And that's why the materials list is often, I ask kids to generate the list, then write their procedure, and then go back and look at their materials list again and make sure they've included everything. Because sometimes the act of writing the procedure shows them like, oh, I should have included this thing. Experiment three, uh, how does the amount of light penetrating water change with depth? All right, so in this case, I would need a boat. I would need some sort of light sensor that I could put under water. I would need rope to hold that light sensor, maybe weights to make it sink if it wasn't heavy. That's not listed. Again, another example of once you do it, you might realize, oh yeah, I, I should include this on my materials list. And then of course, a meter stick of some sort to measure how far down you are actually uh, putting this light sensor. If you found this video helpful, please, subscribe and give me a thumbs up and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.